Today I'm coming to you from Scottsdale, from a really nice neighborhood where you'd never, ever, ever would expect an urban farm to be in the backyard of one of these houses. But nonetheless, there's one in this backyard, and it's a house owned by an agriculture enthusiast that wanted to help support a young agricultural entrepreneur. Today I'm going to be talking to that entrepreneur, what he's doing, how he's doing it, and how he's making a go of it, and using this homeowner's kindness as an opportunity to launch his farm career. Stay tuned for that, coming up. I graduated with a degree in agriculture, um, controlled environment agriculture from the University of Arizona. Um, took a couple of years, you know, kind of just try to figure it out a bit. I was working construction. Um, I was going to move to California. I started working on a farm there and then ended up moving back. Um, when I moved back, uh, my uncle actually um, mentioned that one of his neighbors has a really nice greenhouse, um, the one behind me, and said that they had someone that was working on it before. But it was empty for a while, so they might want to kind of try someone, try to find someone to, to run it for them. So um, I ended up coming over here uh, right, you know, within the first 10 minutes, he's, he offered for me to basically start my own company and farm, uh, uh, farm his backyard, um, which uh i actually it happened so fast i took a couple days to think about it and then decided to you know just go for it um. one unique thing about the property that you have here is it's lined with this citrus hedge all along this massive driveway on one side but it's sour citrus yeah yes yeah, uh, sevilla orange sevilla orange you found a use for it so you've taken something here that otherwise would be not usable how did you find a use for it and how'd you move it so when i first got to this property it was probably one of the f first things that i noticed and uh and the owner said, yeah, they're sour oranges. If you can find a use for it, you know, go ahead and sell them or whatever. So I did a little research on them, and uh, it turns out the two probably biggest things that they're used for is um, marmalade, uh, so making marmalade, and then um, also uh, the zest is really good for um, brewing and culinary use. So. Um, I uh, made some contacts in the brewery industry and um, let some of them know that I had these oranges and ended up getting, you know, a 500-pound uh, order, you know, within the first couple of days, which is pretty crazy. So, so pretty sizable, moving mm -hmm. 500 pounds of yeah. product that otherwise would normally probably just totally. fall to the ground yeah, and yeah, it's a nuisance. swept up. So yeah, right, and mm -hmm. you get paid to ship it off property. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, one thing you see or I saw driving around Scottsdale here, you'll probably see it all over Phoenix. I see it all over Southern California, LA, San Diego, citrus trees everywhere in people's front yards, totally. but nobody's picking them. Mm -hmm. The fruit is on the ground, the fruit hangs onto the tree, all this citrus, but it really just goes to waste for the most part. Yet you guys have found a way to try and take some of the citrus in this neighborhood and create a win-win situation for the property owners who own those citrus trees and for your farm as a business. Can you talk about what you've done there? Totally. So uh, we call it our urban forage series. So uh, we essentially, how we first start off, I mean, we, we go through friends friends and uh, family and friends. If they have citrus, you know, that they have too much of, then we'll, you know, do a little trade with them or whatever and come in and harvest typically like the Friday before the, the market um, and then uh, so we'll do a little trade with them or you know some people actually just don't even want anything they're just like yeah take it whatever so um, so yeah we uh, harvest you know probably 10 15 different types of citrus uh, around and um, you know, I kind of, I've, I've done a lot of research over the last, you know, year on citrus and trying to find kind of more unique varieties that fit in with our business model. Sure. So, and then, uh, 
I'll, you know, actually just drive the streets of Arcadia, you know, or in Scottsdale and actually scout trees out. And we actually do door knock and, you know, ask people, you know, if, um, you know, if, if, if they're using their citrus, if they know what they are, we'll try to inform them on kind of what they have there. Um, and then, you know, if, if, and then I'll ask them if they would be okay if we took some and trade for some produce. Um, and you know, more often than, than not, they're, they're more than happy to. Yeah, that's great. So you get a, a yeah. product that you can sell that you take to the farmer's market. Exactly. You have, and you move a bunch of it. Yep, we do. Yeah. It's one of our, it's our top, top three sellers for sure. Yeah. And there's so. probably a lot of areas of the country where you see this fruit trees in people's yards that planted by previous owners or yep. somebody gets overly excited, plants too many fruit trees, they can't pick it all totally. or they can't even use it all. Yeah. You know, somebody like you comes along and can make use of it and again, save them or their gardener, you know, the work of cleaning it up. Exactly. So yeah, it's a win-win situation, you know, um, you know, the, um, and we've actually built pretty, pretty good relationships with some of the, the people that we have harvested citrus from, you know, and so we've kind of narrowed it down. Um, it, it can be a little tedious sometimes driving all over the valley, so we try to kind of keep it to, a, we found a couple of really nice houses with a bunch of, you know, a variety of citrus, and so we can kind of just, you know, typically we're only stopping at three houses or so before, sure. the, before the market starts, and so. Try and keep narrowing down exactly, the you circle. Know, so like, uh, and then, yeah, you, you, you know, then you also get people wanting, you know, on the other side of the valley. I did a, a special on Channel 3 where we kind of talked about this, and I had no idea how many people still watched uh, news, because I was getting, uh, phone calls that whole week about yeah i've got a lemon tree like i'm in mesa you know it's like come get them yeah, yeah come get them and so you know it, it doesn't really make sense for me to to go to mesa and get a and harvest a lemon unless it's like some crazy exotic buddha's hand right citron or something but um, well, well the great thing about it is you're you know you're building your brand you're building your relationships with people and yeah. You never know what's behind a door knock. I mean, worst case, they totally. say no. Best oh. case, they say, yes, you can have the fruit. But then, then even better cases, they become a customer at the farmer's that's, market that's or exactly they right. offer you something else. Totally. I mean, I, I can't explain that enough. Uh, I, you know, I used to be pretty weary about that, but the res the feedback that I've got from it, you know, people, it, you know, you knock on someone's door these days, I feel like they're a little bit hesitant at first, but once they they realize kind of what you're about and what you're doing, they're uh, in incredibly welcoming. And, sure. uh, you know, some of my best customers have come from that. And, um, yeah, it's been nothing but, but great. Uh, it doesn't take that much time. Uh, we also harvest uh, Peruvian cactus apples. Um, so that's... It's a, cactus that grows around here that has kind of dragon fruit like fruit a lot of people probably don't even know yeah, it's edible people, in their exactly. yard exactly and so th that one i'm actually educating them on you know like oh i can people. eat that in the exactly yeah. yeah so yeah we've had a bunch of people that have no idea that it's even edible and then we give it to them and they're you know um and it's not something you want to have you know like all the time typically, but it's uh, something that's unique and they at least want to know. So Sure. Yeah. Well, that's I love great. the idea of it, making use of the resources that are out there exactly. and just helping, you know, get more land, get more stuff that you don't have to grow, you don't have to water, you don't have to buy. That's exactly that. I mean, that's the beauty of it, right? Like uh, we have some accounts or not accounts, but people that might need a little bit of help with their citrus. And so we can kind of offer that. Um, you know, we uh, I can give them advice on a bunch of different stuff, just um, from my background and everything. But um, yeah, you're essentially not using any of your resources. The only thing that you're doing is going there with a, a ladder and a picker, and you know, and and come back with stuff you can sell. That's exactly right. <laughs> I it's love awesome. the idea of it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's about a two acre plot, a uh, quarter acre of actual um, like raised beds and greenhouse. Um, and we've been farming here for a year and a half now, a little over a year and a half. So opportunity for somebody like you 
to get access to land. If you had to go come buy land, either via rent or mm-hmm. buy it out here in the Phoenix area, totally. how would that be? Is that pretty challenging? Not at all. I, I think that there that is one thing that um, I, I think there's plenty of land out there to be farmed. I mean, it is, um, it's crazy. You have to, I think that having some experience or on, you know, something under your belt, belt where you can come to people and say, you know, like, um, yeah, like I, you know, I've done this before. This is what I can do like with your property. I, I think that there's just so much land and opportunity out there in an urban environment where it's not that difficult to find a plot to farm and just to, to, to figure out, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's not hard, but it's definitely out there. And sure. You can definitely find there's people that want to, that notice this movement going on, you know, urban agriculture and stuff and, and want to provide. And so as long as you're, uh, able to work hard and, and, and do that, I think that there's plenty of space for that. How do you view as a farmer renting land or leasing land mm-hmm. or using somebody else's land totally. versus owning your own? Um, I think that it makes sense in a lot of ways or it, it, to, I don't think you even need to rent land. I think that people are willing to, to at the very beginning, you know, I think you can, if, as long as you're social and can kind of, you know, get your point across to people, I think that, you know, a lot of people like in, you know, Curtis has made this point, uh, that you can take somebody's lawn over and make it into a farm, you know, and, and don't even have to really pay them for that. If, if you make it, you know, um, if, if you find, if you find that, that I, I think it's definitely out there. So I don't even think you need to, if you're just getting started, I don't think you even need to make that commitment to lease land. Um, you can kind of start with friends and family for free. Um, but as far as leasing land, it really just comes down to, you know, what's available to you. And, you know, if, if you have some cash built up and you want to buy some land and I, I mean, that's my eventual goal. I would like to have my own land, but that's just, that's in, that's in the, the future. I want, you know, a, a farm where I can farm that for like the rest of my life yeah. or whatever. But as far as getting there, it makes sense to, to lease land. Um, yeah, how do you view accessing land like this as just a step to get to where you ultimately want to go? Oh, Some yeah. people might say, if I don't own the land, I don't want to have it. Then they complain, I can't afford land, so they never do anything. Yeah, totally. So uh, I think that a lot of it comes down to just asking around, um, you know, being being personal, knowing people, you know? So, like, in, in using your – as long as you talk to people – um, about, uh, you know, what you want to do and what you're interested in, you know, this all happened because I was talking to my, you know, aunt and uncle that, you know, I, I do agriculture and, you know, and then they introduced me to here and it's been great. And so, it, um, so as long as I would say, just use your connections and, uh, and I think there's plenty of space for, Especially in Phoenix, definitely in Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix is kind of a widespread um, area. Um, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult in like New York or or <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know, but at least here in my context, it's pretty easy. So, yeah, um, I think that it's a great first step to to not have to not get too into a a lease agreement or anything like that. I think you can find it for free. I think people are, there's enough people out there looking to support agriculture, small scale ag, that you can, you can get a lot of, a lot of places for free and not have too much into it. And so I think that that is kind of important, especially if you're just getting into it, is to not, you know, um, get super overwhelmed with like a lease agreement where you have to, you know, pay on a bunch of stuff sure yeah okay yeah it just depends on your context a lot of the time but what have been some of your biggest challenges as a new farmer 
Um, so a new farmer, the, the business side of things, I would say. So, you know, having to keep track of, you know, it's, it's, it's more just starting a business than anything else. Uh, growing comes fairly easily to me. Um, and with my plant physiology background and stuff, it makes it a little bit easier, but, um, the business side of things. So, um, you know, keeping track of all their seats, uh, you know, um, you know, working out, uh, the yields of everything and kind of keeping everything on paper has been mm -hmm. really hard for me. And that's one thing I'm really trying to improve on. Um, How'd you guys establish yourself at your farmer's market or in the market in general? So I was pretty lucky. I actually, I have a coffee company too. And so we were selling coffee um, the year before I started at the farmer's market on with this farm. And so we were kind of already in that, um, that farmer's market scene. Uh, and then it kind of just came naturally. So, I mean, I think that, you know, just find a good, it's got out a good farmer's market, one that's close, one that makes the most sense. Um, I would recommend just doing one at first. Um, uh, at least one, you know, don't, don't spread yourself out too thin. Um, and make sure it's a good farmer's market, you know, um, and then go from there. I, I can't explain to you how much the farmer's market has really helped out, um, not just sales-wise, but just the amount of opportunity that's opened up for you. I mean, I think that it's not something that I want to do the rest of my life. I don't think I want to be selling at farmer's markets for the rest of my life. It's pretty, uh, I mean, it's, it's great. I have the energy and everything to do it right now. I don't have a kid or, you know, uh, even a girlfriend. <laughs> so, so if you're out there now, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's kind of allowed me to, um, to, it's, it's opened me up to, to, to so many different things sure. and, and my business is going all sorts of ways now that, uh, that I, I can kind of track back to the farmer's market. Um, and chefs have come by that buy from me at the farmer's market that now I have accounts with and it's a great place to start. So what are you most proud of? On your first year and a half here, um, I am most proud of just probably the overall quality and uniqueness to our products. Um, I think that um, that we're getting into this at the right time. I think there's not a better time come to get into agriculture, um, to urban agriculture, and um, and in general, and I think that um, I'm most proud about just our um, our tomatoes and our uh, just quality of product and uniqueness to our product. So I think that we're enhancing people's lives actually in some ways because we are. Um, opening them up to new things. Um, I work with a couple schools as well, which is awesome. Um, and kind of just uh, try to, um, you know, let people know kind of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I would say, yeah, I'm most pr proud of our product and kind of where we're heading now. So starting to get into consulting and all sorts of stuff. So.